Nerds International proudly presents Here we are again for another episode of the Foreign Beggars, a DCC RPG actual play featuring Grimald and Mad Miney. Hold on to your wands, it's going to be a thrill house! So, it looks like we're back once again. This is our DCC actual play, The Foreign Beggars. Hello everyone, how are we doing today? Yes. What? No, I'm not talking to the characters, I'm talking about the players. How <laughs> oh, are you want to know about us for yeah, once, yeah. do you? Yeah. Oh, okay. For <laughs> once, I actually care about you. Oh, thanks for asking, I'm doing alright. Yeah. The sun is shining. The I'm, weather is sweet. <laughs> I'm, I'm half left. <laughs> Good. You're half left. Well, um, uh, in that case, let's move on. How, who are you and who are you playing? Nick, let's start with you. Uh, my name is Nick Lambslice and I will be playing our favourite little obbit, Grimold. Nice. And how about you, James? Yeah, I'm James and I'm playing Miney, who's uh, uh, from a different dimension, who's a dwarf scavenger. Uh. Scavenger. Uh. Okay, yeah. good. He's right, so let's move on and get on with the bloody game, shall we? Oh, yes. Last game, Grimald went in to a other dimension, post-apocalyptic dimension, in order to travel through the lands, pop up behind an evil warlord named Owen Lean and stab him in the back. Mm -hmm. And while there, met an alternate universe dimension version of his friend, Minoc, named Mad Miney. Mm -hmm. Mad Miney decided at the very last minute to come through the portal and come back to Grimald's fantasy universe. And that's basically it. Yeah, that's it. But at the last minute, of course, uh, Grimald did stab Owen in the back and completed his mission. Thus leaving one last mission for Grimald to complete before all of the shit that he's done that's fucked up this universe is is all sorted. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, there's basically a T Rex left over because at some point uh, Grimald had used a, uh, a chaotic allegedly. artifact allegedly uh, allegedly a chaotic <laughs> artifact on another chaotic artifact and that is why the whole world's all goofed up. So, yeah. um, but he's nearly sorted it all out. So can he do it this time? Redemption is coming for Grim. Oh, let's have a look. Inside a simple, large, angular wooden construct, which is painted pristine brilliant white and floats on a glowing cloud that sparkles with gold, there are many people from all races known to humanity, and some not, bustling inside. All those that are capable of wearing robes do. Those too are white and detailed with purple and gold. They queue excitedly on the varnished wooden floor as they chat amongst themselves, their shoes squeaking as they move up the line for it is that holiest of days here on the lawful plains. It is Fish Finger Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Grimald and Miney, you were in the lunchroom, having just given Miney the entire rundown of the plains of lore, from the warehouse of innumerable items, to the wizard's tower, to the basketball court, to the thrones of lore, you worked up a fearsome appetite. As you stand in the vast lunchroom, which is also the arena on Thursdays, trays in hand, waiting for a portion of fish fingers, chips, and beans of lore, the smell is intoxicating. Connolly's fish fingers are legendarily delectable and oft a conversation topic amongst the servants of lore. Miney, you realise this will be the first fresh food you've had in 20 years. Having portaled to this dimension from another where an apocalypse had left the land irradiated, you're used to canned or mutated food. Know this, Miney. I've never had a finger of a fish, let alone knew they had fingers. But I'm quite impressed to find out what they taste like. Well, um... Have you tried a finger of a fish? Well, uh, 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 no, no, I, have, I haven't actually, but... Do you know what fish is? Um, well, it looks like you, right? So it's just going to be oh. your fingers. Well, that's, that's is, what we call low blow, my friend. Is, is, that, is that a delicacy as well? No, it's like you figuratively kicking me in the ghoulies. I'm mentioning my fish-like state. But, I mean, let's face it, you're completely scaled. I think I look quite dashing. As you guys are standing here talking, uh, a person standing behind you nudges you in the back and he's like, can you just 
Can you move on, please? The queue's moving. We're having a conversation here about fingers of fish. Yeah, no, that's what I, I really want one. So can you just move up, please? Oh, um, right. what? Excuse, uh, pipe down. Sorry. Go on, let's move. <laughs> As you uh, move up and continue to move up and continue to move up, it's an agonizing wait. But you eventually approach the front of the queue and nearly all of the fish fingers are gone. <gasps> but sitting there in a cast iron pan, heated by a magical orb of four golden, delectable fish fingers. The smell of fresh spearfish and crispy breadcrumbs wafts upwards, but there's enough for just two portions. Connolly calls you over. It's time to eat. Hey, lads. All right, Jace. Yeah, yeah, not bad. Hey, I got, I got some fish fingers and beans of law and some bloody chips here. I'll take four fish fingers. Joyous day. Well, there's only four, so you can have two, buddy. Is I'll, that... have, I'll have four. Well, M- then, my, yeah, but then he won't get any. I'm quite He's, he has fish fingers already. No, but... Oh. I don't think he... Jason. Uh, uh, That's a bit mean, uh, Grimald, it? I don't think he understands what these are. They're not... Fish don't have fingers. I know what? you're from a, from a universe... Oh, I kind of thought that the fish, they were fingers of a fish as well. Okay, you two, you're not the, you're not the sharpest tools in the... Uh, look, I have had that said about me before. Right, you're having two each, all right? Yeah, fine, fine. Okay. Good, At I, this good. moment, you see a gigantic barbarian you've never seen before jump up from his bench and start sprinting towards you. Give me a reflex save. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> what? <clears throat> 21. That's 11. Connolly quickly scoops some fish fingers onto a plate for you, Miney, and you just dive out the way, still keeping the fish fingers on a plate. <laughs> However, Grimald, you're not so lucky. This gigantic barbarian smashes into you, knocking yours onto the floor. And then he just scoops them up and just eats them instantly. Oi! And he's like, ah, lovely! But I, I, totally my man! You make some sick fish fingers, you beautiful bastard! But, 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 but they'd be my fingers of fish. Ha <laughs> ha! Not anymore, you sick fuck! Look at you on the floor there, you sad bastard! Ha ha ha! Wow. This man is clearly a warrior. He's a gigantic cupboard of a man with a thick jungle of black hair almost obscuring a belt of daggers on his chest. He has a head of hair so thick it could trap a basilisk inside and so long it reaches down to his pitifully small loincloth. And he looks at you two and, he, and he's just like, I'm going, to, I'm going to the basketball court to pick up chicks. See you later, you fucks. You're, and he, you're an asshole. <laughs> you think I care what you say, small man? I could beat you with just my dick, but I'm afraid I caused an earthquake. Bring it. What a rude individual. At this point, you see him just stroll out, and as he does so, he flips you both the bird. <laughs> now I know. I know that's offensive. Dickhead. And Connolly, you can see him sort of leaning on the on the counter where he was serving the food, and he looks like he's melting. And he's, he's like, <laughs> Jason, who'd be that monstrosity of a man? Oh, well, he's quite dreamy, isn't he? Oh. Sorry, I've always idolised him. That's only bloody Eric Jones, isn't it? The greatest warrior that the land's ever seen. Eric Jones? You, why does that name ring a bell? Don't you remember he's the one that wrote all those books on how to be a great warrior? He made millions from the books alone. Well, see, I was never too good with reading. But I, I, I'm sure I have heard of the name. Oh, you must have seen him on all the covers. The one where he was holding four women in each arm. Wow, that does sound impressive. He, he, seemed, he seems like a pompous prick, if you ask me. <laughs> oh, come on, man, he's so dreamy. I mean, I'm not even gay, but I, but if he asked, you know. I must say, his physique is impressive. <laughs> I'll give him that. Impressive? And he's, his hair is quiet. He's like a wardrobe that can wield a sword. <laughs> But what about that tiny loincloth? It's, it, is, it is unspeakably small, isn't it? I know, I did see his thingy when he was running towards me, but, you know... It's almost like it's a joke it's there, because it's so little. <laughs> I know, but... And it's like he's got a canoe underneath it. Yeah, almost like putting a single leaf <laughs> on a... J- <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
so Grimald, oh. after a disappointing lunch of simply chips and beans of law, you find yourself on the Plain of Thrones. Though the smallest of the divisions of the lawful plains, it serves one purpose. It is a bed of clouds holding the thrones belonging to the gods of law. Sixty foot, gold and looming ominously, one of them seats Zovia, the ultimate lawful goddess. The day is hot and the two suns burn bright in the sky. She wears a loose summery dress over her 30 foot form uh, and her hair is in a golden glowing bun. This is Zovia by the way, mighty. She is my boss and also a marvel to look at. I am a deity. I believe they have those in your world too. Uh, yeah, yes, I mean, definitely a marvel to look at as I'm standing under Isn't her. Isn't she beautiful? Looking up her dress. Gaze upon her. No, keep looking up. Gaze upon her bun upon her head. Yes, oh. that is the only bun you should look at. I um, can't take my eyes off it. Thank you. Isn't she a wonder? Yes. What can we do for you, my beautiful? All right. All right, okay. There's no need to be perving on me. I'm not. I'm just trying to uh, delay the inevitable. Yes, there is but one more mission. You see, Grimald, you you once put a chaotic item on another chaotic item and destroy, almost destroyed the world. Well, I would say it was more my predecessor. I'll tell you more about that later, New Miney. Uh, but yeah, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll hold my hands up. And uh, there Mate, have been many missions that you've needed to sort out and there is but one left. Because I've been doing such a good job. Been smashing it, you see, mining, smashing it. Well, one of your previous colleagues did die. Yeah. Uh, well, let, uh, Zoffy, I was Great gonna, job. I was gonna, was gonna kind of break him in softly, if you know what I mean. But it doesn't matter anyway. He, the rabbit's out of the uh, containment unit now, so. Yes, they were in a death race, and uh, essentially, Minoc, his previous companion, fell off the back, and Grimald carried on the race and left him in the dirt. Mangled beyond recognition, oh. one person said. Yes, uh, he was mangled. Uh, imagine a watermelon being smashed by a a, a, gig, a house. Yeah. Oh, well, that's uh... that's pretty likely. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Well, well done. Uh, no, well done, you. So good luck today. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. So um, anyway, and she, you see her wave her hand about, and a bit a gigantic glowing orb appears in front of you, and she goes, "Mighty Grimond, look under the orb, and you will see." Like Shut up. Sorry. And you will see your mission in front of you. Um, Bang your head against this. Ready? Uh. As you both look into the orb, possibly for the final time, you see the beast that had laid waste to your old home city, uh, Grimald. The T-Rex. It is lying on what used to be the town square, where you were once almost hung for using magic. It appears to be sleeping, its huge exhalations vibrating the ground. It would be adorable, if not for the fact that it isn't, at all. The last two times you saw this giant lizard, it was tearing the city to shreds, stomping on buildings, eating nobles, defecating on market stalls, and now it appears its work is done. It's all tuckered out. Around its colossal scaly hide is pure devastation. The city is flattened, not a single building left standing, not a single cry can be heard from the destruction. You left it too late. Fanning City is no more. Oh. No! Whoops. My town has been leveled by this despicable lizard. Well, you chose to do the other missions first. I didn't know he would be, uh, destroying at such a high rate. Well, it's a giant lizard. What do you think it was going to do? I don't know, maybe make friends, hang out. Oh, would have a party with all its lizard friends. Would be nice. <laughs> I don't think the town looks that bad. I mean, you know, there's some salv salvageable... You should have seen what it used to look like. It was fantastic. See where that big bit of... Well, I think it's Turdus, if I'm honest with you. That's where me and my mate used to hang out. Right. Miney, you're used to you're used to this kind of look, right? Yeah. I'm from home then, innit? No, it's not funny. <laughs> funny too, no. The mission still stands. Because if it could do this to one city, it will do it to more. And you guys need to go down there into that ruin... And, uh, fuck his shit up, should I say. I've got a score to settle with this scaly basket. Well, quite. Is that I've seen you fight things before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and your tactic is usually to run away into the next room. So. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sounds whoa. like a good tactic to if you ask me. I've slain many a... Uh, uh, what have you slain, actually? Well, I slayed a, uh... 
I, I, you slayed your best friend? No, it was Cutthroat Jenkins who slayed my best friend. Well, you left him. I, I, I had to leave him can't temporarily. I be, can't believe I signed myself up for this. Yeah, look, I am a good person inside somewhere. <laughs> I, look, you'll see, you'll learn. I am nice, I promise. But, but yeah. Um, but I wouldn't let you go empty handed, okay? Yes. Uh oh. Here we go. Sounds, sounds fun. This week. Hello! Jesus. And you see Eric Jones just walk around the corner and he's oh, like, fuck. It's me, you bastards! You're not the best at slaying, and that's why Eric's here. He's here to help you on this mission. He's the greatest wrestler and warrior that this this entire, well, all the planes have ever seen. Okay? And so he's coming with you. That's right, fuckos! Right. Hurrah! I'm gonna body slam that bitch into oblivion! Just like I did your mums last night! Ha <laughs> ha! We, we don't have parents. You see, he's quite funny. Uh, as yeah. well, that's one of that's one of his great traits. <laughs> he's quite he's quite amusing, and he's strong, and his muscles. Uh, mm, mm, Sophia. So, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. Nobody can resist the charm of a Jones. Mm. Well, I so it's a quite a large amount of testosterone flowing from this uh, thing. I've got so much, I'm gonna burst. But I'll be looking after these two. Oh, it's a babysitting mission for me because I'm the best. Zovia? This really is it? Sure, Jason's not busy? Well, um, Jason's not exactly the fighting type. He's more re- the writing poetry type. Oh, well, right. well what about, uh. There's gotta be someone. What about Sean? What's he up to? He, sure, he wouldn't mind helping. Well, he guards items. Yeah, but. He's not the T Rex slaying type. Uh. Eric, Eric, he once, he once, um, suplexed the train. Uh, that's what, true. It's what, in my book. What was the point in that? Well, the train was coming towards me, so I suplexed it. Do you understand? Jesus. No. Jesus. No. I could suplex anything. Okay. Mm. Okay, well, uh, as nice as the offer is for the uh, bodyguard, <gasps> I think we'd be all right, Zovia. No, I'm coming. No offense, Eric. No, I'm coming. Do you have any idea the amount of gold they offered me? Gold? What? Uh, we uh, didn't get offered it, Zovia. Gold? Gold? You said yes, we had well, to do this for self-respect and, uh, and and to save the world. You never said there'd be gold involved. Yes, but the thing is, you created the problem. Oh. You, you have to do it because otherwise I will destroy you. Um, um, I I didn't create the problem. Can I, can I get gold? Sure. Sweet. What? what? Get, uh, ow! <laughs> but, uh, ow! Sophia. I'll sling you a piece. All right, how's, how's this going to work then? Thank you, mighty. Okay, so I will be creating a portal in a second and I will beam you down to Fanning City and all of you just go down there and beat it. Just just go down there and beat it? It'll be the shortest shortest mission yet. Do we know? Just oh. one combat and then boom. And then and then boom. And then boom. Boom! <laughs> well, do, Eric. Boom! Stop it, you're uh. making me jump. A suplex it? One suplex. That's what they call me, one suplex man. Any combat, one suplex, and everyone's dead. Just like that train. No, I'm not. I'm not a skittish person. But you, you, you make me. You make me jumpy. Ah. Yeah. Well, uh. Okay. Look. Fine. All right. Fine. 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 But do we have any information new about this wicked beast? Yes. Oh. Okay. Um. It sleeps. We haven't seen it do that before. Well, because you can see it doing it right now. Yes. Okay. Nothing else. W- uh, I was busy. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> we had a, we had a game of risk on the go. <laughs> I don't know what this game is, but it must have been important. All right, one last request of you. Just one. Anything. May I have a finger or fish? Yes, please. What are they? They all got eaten. I ate them. We know, Eric. We know you did. You burst in with your tallywhacker afloat and you ate them in front of me and I'm starving now and all you've done since I've met you is make me feel uncomfortable. Wah, wah, wah! Gutted! My fish fingers! What a lunch! Ugh. Anyway, you guys better follow me when we're down there because because I'm the best. Simply. Have you read my book? No, not, no. no not yet. No. no. It's no, called I... How to Be the Best by Eric Jones. You mean you haven't read it? No, I don't, I don't read Because had you read it, you would understand very much how to beat a giant lizard, how to suplex a train, how to punch the sun out of existence. 
That's what what is your what is what is your secret method then? Just be the best. Just lift weights for ages. Okay. Literally ages. Okay, right, oh god. Um, Where's this portal? Yes, quite. There's enough talking, everyone. Get down there. Eric? I shall see you later. Fuck it, this day is just getting worse and worse. And you see Eric just sort of start raising his eyebrows and they start doing it so fast, it's almost like his head's gonna set on fire. <laughs> <laughs> but then Sophia's like <laughs> Okay, sorry, guys, see you later. And you see her wave her hand about and she goes <laughs> and you see a portal open up. Mine this don't get any better, by the way. You know your first experience coming through a world. Yeah. Just a heads up. Mm-hmm. It's it's horrible every time. So you just dive in. Uh, you could do what you like. Could wait, you wait, wait. Before you go, Zovia stops you before you jump into the portal. And her voice is somewhat shaky. And she says, I know I've been described as having a cold exterior, but I'm not quite as harsh as people think. And you see her shift around awkwardly in her chair, clearly uncomfortable talking about emotions. And she says, Grimald, look, I want you to have this. Many, many years ago, when I was like you, before I ascended to a goddess, I found it. And it has been, perhaps, the most helpful item I have ever owned. I will say little about it except this. You will know when to use it. And with that, she reaches into her bra and pulls out a scroll. Although it's tiny for her, it's regular sized for you. Bring it back, won't you? And she looks at you, her usually cold blue eyes showing a millennia of warmth. We came together, Grimald, because you caused this mess in the first place, but I should be very sad to lose you. Well, lose me? Where am I going? Well, uh, you saw the size of that thing, right? Uh, uh, Zofia, no, don't, don't tell me that this is goodbye. Just, it, it, it could be, just... This this is a good, uh, you know, morale-boosting speech here, isn't it? I don't know what to say. You know what, you know what, right, it it, it is, it is it. Um, no, you'll be fine. Just, Uh, look, use the scroll. Yeah. When you're in trouble. When you're in danger. And I'll know when the time is right. You will know when the time is right. I don't know what to say, Zofia. It's a bit ominous, isn't it? Not yet, but, but look at her. Uh, I am looking. I can't not look at her. Oh, and no. you. Hello. Miney. Mm-hmm. Wanderer of the Plain of Wastes. Yes. You're putting your life on the line for an existence that is not even yours. Why? Oh. Well, I, I thought it was obvious. I mean... <laughs> Obvious, Gordon, why? Have you, have you seen my world? It's nothing but scorching heat, a barren desert, intermittent acid rain, constant survival of the fittest, just utter chaos, and pure evil. Mike. Oh, Mike. And Grimbot here told me of grass that's green, rain that doesn't burn you, owl kebabs that will give potatoes a run for their money. Oh, yeah. Who wouldn't want that? Oh, yeah. Not only that, but I lost my best friend, my life companion, my Grimbot. Then suddenly this guy here, an upgraded version of Grim, he has uh, non-programmed feelings and emotions. I can finally connect properly instead of being able to recite every predetermined phrase that comes out of his mouth. <laughs> I, I, <clears throat> I mean, um, yeah, yeah, I've got, I, I've got a new gr- Grimbot I can, I can hang with and, and stuff and stuff. You can see her eyes start to well with tears. She's beginning to cry, and she goes, If you survive, there will be a place for you here. Miney. (coughs) 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 No one's ever said anything so nice. Shut up! Everyone, shut up! (coughs) All this gooey emotions. I mean, it's just... uh, just, Yeah, yeah, yeah. did did you see the game last night? (laughs) Where's Eric going? Oh, shut up! I'm going into the pool room. This is such a load of whack! I hate all of this shit! You guys are all talking about all this gooey, all this gay stuff! Fuck all of it! And then you see him just hop into the pool. Hello? Oh well, so I suppose this is goodbye then, Zovia. You beautiful, beautiful god. Shut up! I didn't mean any of that stuff I said, it was a joke. <laughs> yeah, I mean, me, me too. Yeah. Go into the portal, get Eden, I'll see if I care. Come in, Mighty. It's time to do what we do best. J- jump. <laughs> 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 You 
go through this swirling gateway and are dropped right behind the sleeping dinosaur. Give me a luck roll, please. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Five. Five. So the T-Rex, you see it immediately wake up and start sprinting towards you. Its overwhelmingly large feet crashing like war drums against the cobbles, its hungry eyes looming ever closer, pints of viscous saliva trailing from its gaping jaws. And as it does so, you notice Eric, he turns to you and he goes, None of it's true! None of it's true! I wrote the book! I, it's, it's all made up! I did it! It was a, it was a, it, it was a social experiment! Uh, in, uh, none of it's true. I just I wrote it to see if people would believe it. You I'm, what? I just lifted weights. I'm a nerd. I love war gaming. I, I none of it's true. I've never suplexed a train. I I've never even seen a train. Oh for God. You've got to help me. Look, but I uh, there is one thing. I'm 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 stinking rich. If you get me out of this alive, I'll give you half of everything I own. Half. I promise you. And the T-Rex is just coming towards you, roaring. And he's like, please, please. I can't fight. I can't. It's all bravado. I've just written a book. Well, ain't this a perfect fucking start? Mighty, we're on our own, mate. Roll for initiative. Oh, God. <laughs> the T-Rex is going to go first. Tut. So, the T-Rex goes for a bite on Miney. Oh, shit. Bites into his arm. Does manage to gash a gigantic chunk of meat out of your arm with its oh. massive jaws. You take five damage. Welcome to the day job. Fox. Mommy! Miney, you're up next. I'm gonna um I'm gonna shoot him with my pipe gun. Four and a nine. So you fire your pipe gun listlessly into the air, and both of the shots just miss the T-Rex as your hand shakily fires your pipe gun. Oh, I probably should have used my good arm. <sighs> next is gonna be Grimald. I'm gonna shout to Eric. Eric! Run that way! You're getting away from him! Which way? <laughs> the way you're going, keep going! Right, right I'm facing the T-Rex! Right, turn around and yep. run. Okay. And you see him turn around. Okay. Right. What are you gonna do? Mighty quick. Go the other way. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to try and um, draw her uh, the T Rex's attention to Eric, so he's not looking at me and Mighty, and we're gonna go a different direction. <laughs> Agility roll, please. Agility roll. Twelve. You managed to get a very good start as you're running away from the T-Rex. It is currently still focused on Miney, so you're all right. Then Eric tries to run away. It is a pitiful run. He starts tripping over his own feet, tripping over the cobbles. <laughs> and, it, and he's like, I I'm not that athletic. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Mummy! Mummy! Then the T-Rex, it sees Eric. It's knows that he's going to be a really lovely snack. He's a big chunk of meat. Mm -hmm. And so, it braces one leg to leap forward towards Eric. And as it does so, the ground beneath it buckles under the tension. A cavernous moor suddenly opens up beneath the beast, sending it plummeting along with the pavement into a dark hole, which has opened up where the town square used to be. But the crackinating ground continues to cave away incredibly fast, bits of the floor falling away into the dark cavern, opening further and further, reaching towards you. Both of you give me a reflex save, please. Oh my god. Oh no! Oh, crit fail? Yeah! 21. Grimald, you see the T-Rex plummet into this gigantic hole that's just opened up, and it falls down, a bunch of rubble falling on it, and you see it die almost immediately. Oh, that's then, one way to deal with it! <laughs> Oh shit, Miney! However, Miney and Eric fall on top of it. Luckily, their fall is cushioned by a T-Rex. However, <laughs> it is such a long fall that both of them take three damage. Ooh, ooh. And Eric is like, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna um, uh, gingerly go towards the edge of the hull and be like, Boyos, uh, is down there? Is this hell? I think. I Are we dead? I think. <laughs> I, I killed it. I killed it. No, I think I killed it. I killed it. I looked at that floor. I'm, li I'm looking. I, wa I wasn't looking. Now you were running like a big girl. <laughs> Please don't. All right, all right. I've been bullied my whole life. Eric, it's very nice to see this other side of you. Now the bravado has been squeezed out of your very essence. Don't tell anyone. Look, Have you paid your loincloth? Look, just get some rope. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. And you see him point. Uh, he points sort of off to the side in the hole. And now, Miney, in front of you, you can see that you've dropped into a dungeon. But not a dungeon, no. This has not the smell of the sex lair of Scafra Grodas, 
or the ominous dripping of the caverns of the Chaos Lord, nor the ruinous disrepair of the old King Spire. No. Aside from the destruction left by the giant falling lizard, this is a pristine, polished stone corridor you've fallen into, with gold skirting, and what is that sweet smell you detect? Give me a perception roll, please, Miney. 17. Lavender. Ugh. What is this smell? That's probably dead, dead lizard, nah? No, it smells nice. Look, can you see me from up here? It smells like the balls my mum runs me. It smells nice. It certainly does. Come here. Grim uh, Grimald. Yeah. yeah. We found a tomb or something. Yeah, what about, what about? We found a, a hidden crypt. Okay, but just double check. Is that big massive lizard still breathing? You see Eric poke it and he's like, no. No. Dead, is it? Yes. So, uh, but I think I might be as well. Is this hell? <laughs> Maybe. Who'd have known that there was all this underneath my old town? So if I jump and land on this lizard, do you think it will cushion my fall? Well, like I certainly... I, I got a few bruises on my ass as I landed. Did you land on it? I got a battered ass. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. So Maybe just... I should risk battered ass for it. Just be careful. Okay. Here we go. Give me an agility roll to jump down in the hole. <laughs> Four. <laughs> You land right on the arse. <laughs> you take six damage. Oh! It's about 30 feet down. Ow. And you, you're flailing like a mad wizard as you fall down. And ah. as, as you hit the floor, you just land straight on your arse. And he's like, see? For some oh. reason, this hole, it, it magnetizes the arse. I think I broke my towel bone. You broke your arse. <laughs> All right, mining. Laugh it up, mate. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah, well, it was quite funny. It was right in the bum. <laughs> Ow. Uh, help. Can you at least help me up? Oh, my arm. The corridor you're in is fairly dark due to its relative lowitude from the surface from whence you tumbled. However, you do both detect, at the end of the 30-foot hallway, a strong, single mahogany door. On it, a plaque made from gold which glimmers even in the dark. Oh, shiny. Uh, what what does that say? What uh what uh, let, uh let's get closer. Let's have a little look. Yeah, Don't it feels good to be back in here, feels like I'm back on the old day job. Well what do you do for a living? Adventurer. Now that's not a job. Yes. Yeah, is. Writer, that's a job. War gamer, that's a job. No 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 it's not. Fake barbarian, that ain't a job. <laughs> Made up personality. That's not a job. Oh, cutting! Here, I want to borrow my knife. <laughs> you, see, you see him just hang his head, and, he, and he's like, "Oh, don't get upset. Look, all your hair's messy. Come here. Look, why do people always have to bully me? Because you make it so. Do you know how horrible you were to me in front of my my one true love, Sofia? You made me look. She's thirty feet tall. What could you even do? I could love her, love her like my own. That's weird. Okay. Moving on. All right. Well, let me lead, seeing as I'm the only one that knows what I'm doing. As you approach the plaque, you can see it has a message on it. It says, Welcome back, Mayor White, to prove thyself. Thy know thy plight. Thy must show thy wealth. Anyone? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? What? Insert a coin into the door. Well, that's me done then. Yep. Uh, or, or, or just turn the handle. Got any gold in that loincloth? I got, I got charm pieces. Only my massive cock. <laughs> Sorry. Right, let's try this handle then. I'm quite good at these. Yeah! Why did you need to make that noise? I do that when I do stuff. It's just a handle. <laughs> it's automatic. Right, okay. Part of my upbringing, I think. Yeah, the door just swings open. It's just a normal door. <laughs> there you go, see? All right, well well done for opening a door. It's not, it's not that impressive. One point to Grim. Winning. Once you go through the door, you're greeted by a room the size of a modest pub. Its stone walls are similar to that of the corridor you came from, but the floor is overspread in a lush, bouncy, crimson carpet. Atop that are two high-back, leather, wing armchairs. They look expensive and almost unused. They face a wall. On this wall is a gold picture frame with some abstract art contained within. It is a large, chest-sized canvas painted entirely black. Next to it is another door like the one you just came through. It has a shining gold knob which glistens in the lamplight that gives this whole room a homely glow. Nice in here. I can't believe that pompous pig, Mayor White, was hiding all this under our very noses. This looks like a pretty nice place. 
You should have met Fanning City. It was an incredible place. No, it wasn't. It stank. It was to me. And I was one of the rich people. I had a big, big old house in the up in the north. You don't know what the, uh, the society was like on the streets. It was a place you could call your own. It stank even worse. Yeah, but the people didn't. Not their attitudes. They were loving and caring and they were having rob outsiders and... They robbed me! Well, exactly. Look at ya. Fair enough. Mighty used to remind me a bit like you. With your... With your flush ways. I remember when I was a noble. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? This... Uh, look, I'm not even gonna... I'm not even gonna bother responding to that. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm sick of it. Sick of hearing all this crap. As you stand there talking, you can see a ghost come out of the painting on the wall. Oh shit! This, this ghost is obviously see-through, but it's got a gigantic moustache, and uh, it's got this slick back hair, and wears a obviously a butler outfit. And he goes, "Well, hello, uh -oh. hello, uh -oh. Spectre. Welcome to the dungeon beneath Fanning City. So today you have entered into a very, very hard test." What? Well, no, we didn't. Yes, we you have. Him. We killed him. We, um... Silence! We're just having a... having a rest. This is the... yes, have a rest indeed. There are two chairs here. Sorry, we would have done another, but budget, you know. You have entered the first test chamber. It was... uh, could we get out? Take take a seat on the chairs. Take Although, a seat on uh, the chairs! Alright, fine. Okay. And then the test will begin. No. I'll object. Really? Please. Okay. On your head be it, my friend. I'm in the chair. Give me a reflex save, please, Hermione. Tut. 21. You see some lightning just come out of the ceiling. <laughs> and you, But you quickly jump out the way and he's like, Stand still when I'm trying to lightning you. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'll sit on the chair. No, he's got to sit. Sit down. <laughs> oh, this is lovely. You see the ghost sort of standing in front of you and he's gesticulating with his arms and trying to do, sort of like really present himself well and he's like Welcome to the quiz of wealth Ooh. In this you will have to prove that you are in fact Mayor White Okay Question 1 You are in the pub when the landlord accidentally drops a pint glass on the floor sending it scattering and smashing all over the place What do you do? Do you A Go and help him pick it up and gather all the pieces. B. Say nothing. Or C. Cheer raucously. I used to know this, Mayor White. Let me try and handle this one. Uh, cheer raucously. I was, I was going to say that. Both of you take three damage <laughs> as lightning comes down from the ceiling and zaps you in your chairs. Ouch. Ah, uh, bitch. Foolish. It was a trick question. You would not be in the pub in the first place. You would be at a nice dinner party. Oh, that's a trick question, you trickster. Correct. Oh. Question two. You were eating an al kebab. Which condiment do you choose? A. Ketchup. B. Mayonnaise. <laughs> or C. A very nice champagne jam. Um, I wouldn't be in an al kebab in the first place. Good, very good. Okay, now see. Yeah. The Duchess of Vey comes over for dinner. Sleep with her. Ow. As you say this, you take eight damage. <laughs> as another lightning bolt hits you directly in the head as you're sitting in your chairs. And Eric goes, You know you have to get me out of here alive, right? Yeah. Stop dying. Okay, you've got one final question. Now, you know you have to get the majority right to prove that you are, in fact, Tim White. Yeah. The mayor. Yeah. Okay, so you have to get this one right. Okay. You open a bottle of champagne. From where do you pour the bottle? Is it A, you hold it from the neck, B, the body, or C, you get your butler to pour it? Butler. Butler. No, it's a trick question. You would not be drinking champagne in the first place. You'd be drinking mega champagne. Oh, come on. Only joking. Yes, you're right. It's yeah. Fun. Welcome back, Mayor White. And he looks uh, over at Miney and he's like, you've lost a lot of height. Yes. And oh, I've been, I've been uh, on a diet. It's we been 20 years since you've been down here. Mm-hmm. 
We bumped into a wizard as well. Got mm-hmm. a bit complicated. Who's your friend? And he points at Grimald and and Eric. Oh, this this big one here is my butler, and uh, this one here is uh, uh, my quick queen. Hello. What? That's a woman. And he points at Grimald. Yes. Yeah. Well, times really have changed, haven't they? Hmm. Good. Mm. Great. Good, I suppose. Great. Nice. Nice to meet you. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, proceed to the next chamber, I suppose. I will. Thank you very much. But do you haven't got your racket? No. What? what? No. And you see him fade back into the painting. <laughs> So you enter the next room, and what you can see that this one is absolutely gigantic. Of course, it still has the stone walls, but the ceiling is much, much higher. And for some reason, there's some sort of faux grass all covering the floor, and a net that basically dissects the room. On the other side of the room, you can see a stony person made completely of stone with glowing eyes. He greets you with two gigantic stony arms waving at you, and he says, Welcome back, Mayor White. All right. Hello. hello. And you can see that what he's waving with is a long stick with a circular appendage on the end Mm -hmm. with a tight net inside it. I think he's armed. Careful. Mayor White. Yeah. Yeah. You look different. Wait a minute. Which one of you is Mayor White? Me. Him. So why did you say yes? Oh, because I just do that sometimes. I'm, I'm not right in the head. Because no. Mrs. White. Mrs. White. Cooey. Oh, hello, madam. Hi, nice to meet you. So, Mel White. Yes. You know the drill. Uh, do I? Could you repeat it again? Because, ah, a bit rusty. Tennis. Sorry, ten... Tennis. My husband has been... My husband has been drinking! You have to excuse him. Eric starts cracking up. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yes, and I'm his um, concubine." Butler. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Butler. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, I'm a bit tipsy. Well, we've all had a little bit of a tipel. Exactly. Should I also speak like this? No, no, no. Wait. What's wrong with your voice? Uh, uh, <coughs> I, don't, I don't know. Mayor White, you're obviously having an off day, so I will remind you. In order to get to your riches at the end, which you have so expertly sealed behind all these chambers and challenges, what you need to do is beat all of the challenges. And this one in particular is you have to beat me, the tennis golem, at a game of tennis. <laughs> I, I, I struggle to see how you would forget building some a challenge like this, but but okay then. Are you ready? Have you bought a racket? No. Well, you can use this one then. And he throws you, clearly an aged, old, battered racket. And he's like, the alley racket. Sounds great. You can see that this racket, it has many strings missing. It's it's battered. It's bit, It's got loads of chips all around the edge. <laughs> and then you see the golem's eight other arms appear from behind its back. And it's holding eight rackets. <laughs> Jesus. <clears throat> Well, Jesus. let's do this shit. Knock him dead, uh, Abyss! Yes. Uh, Woo! Uh, yes. Hot stuff! Yes! Rah, rah! Your serve! And he, th- he hurls you a tennis ball. And once it gets to your side, you can see that it's a bomb. <laughs> ah! Loser gets exploded. You know the drill, White. White? What? Yeah, yes. Yes. Let's do this. Okay. Go, hubby! Yeah, go, whatever. Bloody hell. Jesus, I didn't write an award-winning book for, to, to put on a, a stupid concubine butler voice. Just get on with a bloody tennis game, will you? Give me a uh, give me an agility roll to serve. Thirteen. You bat it over, and he then bats it back. Ah, fourteen. But as he bats it back, you then smash it back towards him. As he only gets a three, he misses it. Your whack of the bomb towards him is so fast, he doesn't even see it coming. And the bomb explodes just as it hits the floor. 
Seven damage. Get in there! Nice one, you bastard! Ha ha ha! Ha, take that! And the golem is like, Very nice, very nice serve, Mr. White. And you see him bow, and then he's like, Right, now for round two. What? Fifteen, love. Fifteen? But he's only hit it once! Yes, Where'd you get fifteen from? Yes, the game doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay. Most of us played while we've been drinking a lot of pims. Okay. What, but why do you call me love? Okay, my serve. You see it come in, but the thing is, he only got a 10, so it's coming in and you manage to see its trajectory pretty well. Give me a roll. 18. You smack it back towards him, and he only gets a 7. Oh. He does not manage to even hit it again, and you see the bomb drop at his feet, and he goes, Well, bugger me. And the golem falls into tiny pebbles. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Yes! You beautiful bastard cunt! <laughs> nice one, Miley! I mean, Mayor White! <laughs> he's Goodness! Dead. He's dead. It's fine, Miley. Yeah, you can say his real name now, he's dead. But what it. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, I, yeah. What, 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 what? Well, I thought there might be. I thought we were people watching. Keep up the Paintings charade. with holes in the eyes! Well, have you been down the dungeon before, mate? I've written about being in dungeons. Right, 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 okay. Right. Well, good, good show. And all that. I'll yeah, feel, I'll feel pretty right. Exhilarating game of tennis. I think they should make uh, bombs in tennis a regular rule. I've never seen tennis before, but Neither I like either. it. Uh, it was, it was dead. It's deadly. I mean, look, it is dead. Usually they just play with a ball. <laughs> that sounds much more uh, peaceful. Yeah. Well, I'm anyway, up. should we fun. go in that door over yonder? Let's do it. Oh, do we have to? You know, this is easy for me. I haven't had to do anything yet. Funny that. Right, you're my away next. Oh, blood, blood off. <laughs> nice one. Oh, God, we need to take turns. I'm fucked. Just got promoted, Eric. Okay, I'll be my away next. Fine. You go into the next room, um, and curiously, the door to the next chamber is, again, just it, it just opens normally. It's just there wasn't a lock or anything like that. Eric sort of says to you guys, he's like, Well, you... Could we have not just gone through the door? Yeah, I just saw that. It's not how it works. You must conquer the room before you can continue. Mm. Well, it's... That's how it works. It's a bit like a, a horrible, horrible game. Mm. But this isn't a game, though. It's real life. Exactly. Couldn't, can't we... Let's see if there's another door in the other, in, in the other room, then. There will be, more than likely. But first, you must, again, put your bodies and minds on the line. You get used to it, you get used to it. Are you feeling alright, Grim? Yeah, I'm feeling better than ever. It's like I'm back to my old ways. Well, you like doing this stuff. You, you like getting what? exploded by games and, and, and quizzed by ghouls. Yeah, you should see what I was doing before. What? This is great compared to that. Alright then. And then you guys reach another heavy wooden mahogany door. And as you go through it, you can see that there's uh, a table laid out in a room that looks like a bar, but like a really nice bar. And in there, there's a, a lush, thick carpet and sofas. And this table has four glasses of wine on it. And behind it, there's a barman, but he's he looks like a puppet wearing a suit. And this puppet's been animated. And the puppet starts to speak to you, but it's not with a mouth or anything like this, it's in your minds, and you can hear this strange voice. Wine tasting? Uh, yes please. No thank you. Oh. Hang on a minute. None of you look like Mayor White. But you must be, you've already completed two challenges, although, of course, you do need to complete the final challenge. Yes, that's me! Mayor Brown! White! Sorry! Uh, yes, I've uh, been at the, at the, uh, uh, I've been at the gym. Yeah, and he bumped his head. He's got a bit of uh, amnesia. Yes, I've got amnesia. Yeah, see? Uh. So, uh, what's all this then? What's this uh, wine tasting? I'm good at this. Right, give me the wine. You must sample each wine and tell me from which year it came. Well, bugger me. I should probably... should probably do this. Well, that rules me out. But you are not Mayor White. I am, actually. It's Surprise! Good. Surprise! <laughs> <sighs> Surprise! <laughs> I'm not Mel White at all. I'm just this concubine. We have sex. Uh, yeah. Don't worry, guys. It's a ruse. Shouldn't have shouted that. And I'm but a manservant. You're a... You know that slang for penis, right? Oh. 
Yeah, I'm but a penis. Wowzers. <laughs> yeah, this guy here, see the short one with the beard, Miney, he's Matt White. I don't know why I said a different name just then. He meant Whitey. Miney Whitey. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's his it. nickname. Yeah, Miney Whitey. Yeah. Because he likes miners. Nope. Didn't say that. Sorry. I'm going to shut up now. Goodbye. You see him walk off to, and sit on one of the sofas. <laughs> and he looks he looks really sad. Is there another door in this room? There certainly is. Oh, There's gonna, one behind the bar. Yeah, I'm going to walk up to the bar bar door. As you start walking towards it, you can see that the uh, the puppet turns to face you and holds up one of its puppet hands. And it's, it's shaking in a very strange manner as if being lifted by strings. And it says... I wouldn't do that if I were you. It's going to explode you or something. Ugh. Yeah. Lightning. Bomb. All right, fine. Told you, you got to win the room before you can move on. Uh, I'll walk up to the... Grimmauld was right. Yeah. I'll get to the fucking... I'll get to the fucking bar, though. But you are not Mayor White. He is. And you see the puppet point to the man on the sofa. And he's like, No, I we just said, didn't we? We'd, I told you. Yes, it was. Yes. yes. I'm Mayor White. Right, give me a personality roll. Eleven. Strange joke, but uh, I'll take your word for it. You don't look like him. No, I've been told that before. When was the last time you saw your boss? It's been a long time. Exactly. I made this room. Let's get on with it. Right, try all the wines. Tell me what year they came from. Mm-hmm. 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 You gotta drink them! Ah, oh, yes, sorry. Uh, you don't just, no, you don't do it by osmosis. Oh, I'm gonna um, try and reawaken my nobilistic past and, and see if I can do this. So, what you Coffee. need to do is sip the wines and then yeah. give me intelligence rolls. Yeah. Wine one. Put my nose in it, have a proper sniff. Check the legs. Yeah, yeah. go for it. Give me an intelligence roll. <sighs> oh, six. You detect that this one, yes, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's about a week old. <laughs> oh, it's about a week old. At this point, you feel like somebody's punched you in the brain. <laughs> it's some sort of psychic attack. You take two damage, e. and it's like, wrong. Uh, uh, well, that was uh, painful. You see, you send some uh, great anger coming from the puppet, and it's like, try wine number two. This one you can see is a white wine. Come on, male white. 16. As you taste this one, you, you do recognise some of the bouquet of it. You could probably guess that this one's about a hundred and so years old. It's a very expensive one. You've tasted many like this back in your rich days. Okay. Mm. Mm. Those noises are disgusting! Mm. It sounds like you're blowjobbing! Shut up, will you? Sorry. He's working, he's working! This is uh, about... What year is it? Mm. It's about a hundred... It's about a hundred years old. Well, you do have quite the, quite the gums. Mm. That thing's creepy. Yeah, he is. Did can, he win? Did he do it? Yes, yes, it's right. Yeah. We can, can we beat the puppet up? Uh, uh, have you seen his, his, I don't think we think we can. You go, yeah, go on. You can it, try you, unless you be punched in the go. brain. No, I, I, I discussed earlier, I don't beat things up, but give, can you beat it up? No, no. I'm beating it up by doing this. And then you see, um, as Eric sits on the sofa, you can see him sort of start clutching his head, and he's like, "Ouch!" <laughs> Sorry. Don't, don't even suggest things, bad things. Wow. Next wine. Thirteen. Oh, yep. Yeah. No, twenty-year-old rosé. Wow, Tim White, it is a pleasure to have you back. Mm. Although, what is with the scars and the the small cannon on your hip, and the smell of copper? and the, no, the, the, the loss in height and the beard. Why are you asking all these questions? It, it's just that you, you do, you've, you're very different. Oh, I'm so small. I get drunk quickly. Your boss has had a long day. Okay, proceed. Thank you, pop it. You only need bar snacks. Well, uh, yes, there's, uh, there's peanuts. Cat's ears. Ah. We've got cat's ears. Yeah. Peanuts and cat's ears. How lovely. And as you go behind the bar, yeah, you can see there's a bowl of cat's ears that have long since gone off. Oh. And there's also some peanuts that look so rotten, it's unbelievable. Oh, I'll probably leave them. Those don't look appetising at all. No. How long you been behind this bar? 40 years. Didn't think to rotate the stock? Yes. I would if I had some more stock to rotate. Ah. Alright, well... In fact, that, that wine has been open for quite some time. 
I mean, you just drank a lot of dust. Oh. Uh, I could test it. Oh, well, we, we'll look into that later, won't we? Won't we? Husband? Oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> he, he already think you, you're allowed to go to the next chamber. Just call him by his real name. Everyone knows you're not. No, 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 no. As you go through the the gigantic mahogany door, um, you can see that now you're into sort of a cave structure. It's no longer these polished stone walls and carpets and gold and things like this. You've completed the final challenge and now you get into a gigantic, gigantic cave. And in this cave, you can see that there is just an absolute gigantic pile of gold. There must be at least a million gold here. It glistens even in the darkness and it's an amazing sight for all of you to see. This is clearly Tim White's personal stash. And all of this stuff is more money than you've ever seen and will ever need. But, in front of it, you see an old rival. And he sits there, pointing a mini cannon at you. And he says, Hello boys, I heard you coming. It's Snake Boy. Snake Boy. He's, he's the first rival that you ever made when you went adventuring. And he's now standing uh, in front of you with a cannon. And he's like, Guess I got some splaining to do. It's you. Don't take another step forward. I'll blast you into oblivion. I'm pointing my gun at him. As you go to reach for it, he's like, Don't even. Don't even. Don't mess with this. Who the fuck is this guy? Don't mess with this bloke. Who is this guy? He's a slivery little sod. <laughs> Look, I, I, I snuck past all the, all the, all the chambers. You, can, you don't get far in life being a snake if you can't sneak. I'm a sneaky snake, you understand me? Yeah, we know. I know about that. I know about your sneakiness, mate. After, after we had our little encounter, you remember when you guys was about to get hung and I, I screwed you over in the courtroom? Oh, yeah. Well, what happened was is the town kind of went to shit after your friend turned into a gigantic monster. You remember that girl? What was her name? Lexaliah. Oh, yeah. Okay, when she turned into a monster, people weren't pretty happy with Tim White. Because he was the one that kind of brought her into the stocks. You know, she was going crazy, destroying the city, and he needed a bodyguard. Guess who he picked? You. Yeah. Of all the people, we picked you. And that's when I learned about this little chamber down here. Well, he told ya. So when the city started getting destroyed by this T-Rex, I stole his keys, and I came down here. What have you been doing, just sitting on the gold, I could... Well, I, as I was about to get it, I heard you guys coming down here. Right. And here we are. And here we are. You slivering little fool, Barney. No, you don't. You don't talk that way to the person who's holding a cannon up to you. True, true. You wait till I get near you. You can't get near me, motherfuckers. No, I'm, I'm, you're I'm sneaky. This gold's mine. Hey, snake bitch. My name's Snake Boy, not Snake Bitch. Hey, Snake Bitch. Say, That's it, say that one more time and see who gets no. cannoned in the face. Because so, hey. I, I guarantee you it ain't gonna be me. He's had a cut of drinks, wait, wait. Hey. Everyone calm down. Snake. Bitch. Whoa! You see the cannon blast forward, and you see Miney in an instant get completely destroyed by cannon fire. What? The cannon it rips through him like a mini meteor, creating a hole in his stomach, and you see Miney's lifeless body hit the floor in two halves, and almost like a lightning, Snake Boy has slithered to the front and has reloaded it with another cannon shot in there. You shot my new friend! Well, now he's a new corpse. Fuck! Um, right, so Grimald, you're up first. I'm going to run over to Miney's um, obliterated corpse and uh, try and uh, grab the um, plasma pistol. Oh, the shiny one. Give me an agility roll to do that. 17, mate. Yeah. You run over quick as a flash and you see the shiny gun on uh, just on his de decapitated legs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's still in its holster. Yeah, and, and you quickly pick it up. Now you can fire at Snake Boy. On guard! Uh, 17. Ten damage, mate. It is a brutal shot. You shoot Snake Boy with this thing right in the shoulder, oh. and you've never felt the feeling of recoil before, and it is it makes you feel very powerful. And Snake Boy is like, "What the hell is that? Have that!" 
Why is that wand bent like that? I know wand, mate. This be a, uh, what do you call it again? P-Tel. I don't know, I don't like it. That's right, there's plenty more where that came from, I think. Next up is his turn and he's like, well let me return the favour, you tiny little fish prick. I just stick my tongue out and go, Bleh! He, um, he fires off a cannon shot and it doesn't get you with the full brunt of it, mm -hmm. but the side of it clips you and it feels like you're being punched by a god. You, Oof! Take, you take six damage. Oh, bitch. So it's nice when you get it back. Uh, next up is Eric and he's like, um, actually, too heavy for me. Goodbye. What, and Eric? You see, no, sorry, deal's off. Barbarian, come on! No, I can't. I don't want to. I don't want to become a, a two halves type of guy. Goodbye. And you see him running back the way you came. Oh, ain't that lovely? Me and you, Snake Boy, like it always should have been. You, are a slivery little piece of shit. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I oh, don't say that affectionately. Now eat this. Hey, yeah. A six damage. You, you fire into his chest, and you see him go. Ah. And you see him doubling over in pain, and he's like. Well, that did not go how I uh, predicted. Um, okay, uh, tell my kids, uh, sorry I didn't get all the riches. See, that's one thing you didn't. Uh, <coughs> and you I'll don't do that now. You see him cough. You see him cough up some blood, and he's like, "Well, uh, well, you, you didn't ask, did you? See, that's the funny thing about you guys. You just kill whoever you want, and you never ask. And you see him then fall onto the floor. <coughs> if anybody has any kids, dear. Next, you gotta tell me you got a wife. Well, yeah, Mary is a very nice woman. And oh. We've been going through some hard times recently. Not a lot of cash, and this would have really turned things around. Oh, don't do that to me now. It's okay, my son Timmy. He didn't even need a new wheelchair. Oh, for, no, no. <laughs> Only kidding, I'm single. And then you see him just die, oh, and his, his eyes roll into the back of his head. And he's a load of just snake blood, just an effluvia is all over the floor. <laughs> Redemption! No, justice! Well, both. Now, hold on, come here. I'm gonna stamp his head. <laughs> okay, give me a strength roll. 17. <laughs> His head bursts like an upset tub of jelly. As for me first, Miney, and I've got boot the uh, boot the rest of his body. <laughs> yeah, it slides across the room. And as for the other Miney, oh shit! And I run over to the legs. Yeah, and um, my legs. And look for a pulse. Um, give me an intelligence roll. <laughs> see, see uh, if you know how to check for a pulse. <laughs> Nineteen. Yeah, I mean it's successful. Um, there isn't a pulse. You you do find the vein, but just as I thought. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, Eric! Shut off! Come back! No. All right, fine. Me again on my own. And there you stand. You you thought you'd finally found a replacement for your old friend, but your new friend lays there, dead, um, definitely dead, on the floor, and he is absolutely, completely destroyed. And you've been abandoned by Eric, but in front of you, you have all the money you will ever, ever need. On the upside, I could buy a thousand friends. <laughs> all this money. And I look at my pockets and go, ah, shit. I ain't gonna fit in there. How am I gonna get this out of here? <laughs> So we cut to 45 years later, and Grimald, you are in your mansion, and you're hosting a party for all the other nobles in the area. You've moved up north, and you've bought a gigantic amount of land. You're now Lord Grimald, and as you're standing in your mansion, you take a quick glance outside to the Miney and Minoc shrine that you built outside, the gigantic monolith. Um, outside and then you turn back around to the party and see all the guests smoozing and boozing and realize that life is good but it would be much better if you had your two friends there and then your butler walks in 
Lord, Lord Grimm. I, look, I told you not to interrupt me unless you are holding a Beaujolais. Um, slight problem. There uh, appears to be a mist coming towards us. What I was, mist? I was out in the garden doing the gardening and this is happening. Mist. A mist. The thing is, while, whilst your butler was outside in the back garden, he saw a gigantic pink mist that almost obscured everything, his entire view, the horizon, everything, and it was just advancing towards the mansion. Yes, a massive mist uh, in pink colour is coming towards the, us. Well, has he got an invitation? Uh, afraid not. We'll tell it to go away then. Mm. I did try already. I'm getting my head massaged. Mm. Well, I've done my job. You are warned. Oh, Good. show me this blood. Look, get, get off, get off, get off, get off my head. Right, show me, show me this mist. And get me some wine as well while we're at it. Right you are, sir. That's more like it. Come on, show me this friggin' mist. Okay, Grimald, you pick up your walking stick and advance towards the back of the mansion. Once you get out into the garden, you can see that this reminds you of your good old adventuring days. This thing is thick. It's it's thick, viscous. You can't see anything when you look into it. It's, you can't see through it at all. And it appears to have these weird tendrils that eat up anything that comes near it. Trees, people, dogs cats, birds, anything, and it is just advancing towards the mansion. And there's me thinking that these days were over, lording it up, but it looks like the call to adventure gets quietened, but not silenced. Here we go again. Ha <laughs> ha! So that is the end of series one of The Foreign Beggars. For those that are worried, don't don't worry about it. We're going to continue Foreign Beggars or in some form, but we're going to do it on the regular schedule. It's just that we're going to do it a new arc. Yeah. Yes. That's a wrap for the first season. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. Yeah. Time's passed. Grimm's got old and rich. I can't yeah, believe uh, it. He's a lord now. Lord Grimm. He's the only winner. And James's uh, new character, the butler, is going to come in. Yeah, really? <laughs> I've had two, I've had two, two full deads, two Marnies that are dead. <laughs> can we just, um, can we just um, take a moment? Yeah, can we raise a glass to the wonder that was Miney? Yeah, cheers everyone. Cheers, cheers to Miney, man. Yeah, that was the what a guy. I've, I've gutted. Yeah, Miney and Minoc both. I, I'm gonna miss him. Gonna I miss am him. gonna miss him. I'm gonna miss him. Eric, no. Sad times. <laughs> not, not Eric. I mean, he was a bad. He was a bad guy. He was a bad guy. Brilliant, no. What a loincloth. What a loincloth. What a loincloth. With a canoe underneath Oh, it. my goodness, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that was so much fun. But yeah, that was good. That was good fun. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. And, and I think that um, that arc as well was really, really enjoyable. Mm. The only reason that I saw it coming to an end is because once all this stuff was sorted out from the chaos um, stuff, I didn't really see... What next? And what next, yeah. you know. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to do something different. Yeah. Um, and the mist at the end... Um, Let's see if anyone can figure it out. I think it's a pretty fucking obvious clue as to what's happening next for anyone that knows their stuff, really, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Stay tuned. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, so uh, cheers, everyone. Thanks for listening. And if you want to get in contact with us, you can do so. How do they do that, guys? Because I don't know. Uh, Last time I checked, you can get on this thing called uh, electronic mailage. And if you want to put the password in, it's uh, tabletoptwats at gmail.com. Is that the password? Yeah, that's the password. And yeah. of course, we've got Facebook, which is forward slash tabletop T. We've got Twitter, which is at the tabletop twats. Yeah, no, at tabletop twats. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, if you want to sling us a buck, then uh, head over to Patreon. Yeah, uh, forward slash tabletop twats. Because uh, that that allows us to do what we do in it. Yep. Yeah, yes. you know we we don't we're not professionals, despite how <laughs> what you might think. <laughs> <It's> a surprise. <laughs> even, uh, yeah, I mean, even though we um, are incompetent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're Incontinent not pro- as well. Yeah. That's too. Yeah, yeah. A lot, but, of pi- lot of piss in this room. Lot of piss. Lot of so piss in much. it. But our patreons are our lifeblood. Let's we, be honest. Yeah. So thank uh, you guys, and yeah, thank you very thank much for so supporting this much. series. And we're yep. going to continue it very soon. Very soon. And uh, would anyone like to talk about one last thing that might be happening soon? Oh, we're talking about savage. 
BlitzCon. Yeah. Yeah, because we, we're hosting a convention in Red Hill area yep. next weekend. Tw- yep. Well, actually, we can't say that because we don't know when this episode's coming out. But the 21st and 22nd 20, of yep. July. Oh, yes. Uh, come along to that because it's going to be wicked, bro. Yeah, it's going to be off like, a dark hook. And the raffle is legendary. We've got such good prizes yeah. in the raffle. We've got mm-hmm. a world exclusive mm-hmm. Wise Guys demo kit. This is a Ooh. starter kit for Savage Worlds. Um, Printed. For yep. a... Uh, a um, bloody gangster setting. Yeah, mate. And the thing is, this is this is the first time it's ever been in print available. Right? And we got it. We got exclusive sneak preview. So you can have that. You yeah. can have that. If you enter the raffle, you can have, have that. that. And we're not allowed to win it. Well, actually, uh, I am because I'm going to wear a disguise. Yeah. Uh, he just comes in mustachioed. Yeah, ma- ma- like a mustache. <laughs> no! <laughs> On top of your wife, so you're really tall in yeah, a yeah. trench coat. My, my name is uh, Bjorn. Uh, uh, I've come from Sweden. Very tall. I like a wise guy. I'll get the new prize. Uh, yeah, definitely not Lex. No, uh, no, no. So, uh, oh, wise guys. I uh, take all. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully, uh, if you he can, don't turn come up, along yeah. to Savage Con. Um, search for Savage Con, the UK's only Savage Worlds convention yeah. on Facebook. Yes. All right, and that's it. Guys, bye. 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 What do you mean I'm fired? You can't look, fire me. Look, look, I not, need this job. Look. I am voice acting. I am the narrator. It's nothing. You personal. bastards. You, you witch. You rue the day look, that you fired me. I'm very sorry. Suck my dick. <laughs>